Okay guys, it's Truck Arrest Matthew coming back at you for yet another video in the Tacoma. Now before we jump into this video, I want just want to take a second to say please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss more truck-related content, outdoor-related content, bushcrafting, firearms, and the usual stuff from this channel. As always, subscribes are more than appreciated, and I look forward to having you guys a part of the a part of the project. So let's jump right into how I pick knives. Now, this video is in part due to questions that I've got from commenters, but also I wanted to kind of share my experiences because I've been asked uh, to help make knives in the past and share my design uh, kind of choices and what I look for when designing really solid bushcrafting knives and when picking really good bushcrafting knives. So that's kind of where this video is coming from. I'm trying to share my insight and when I take a look at bushcrafting knives and what I think is most functional, most practical, and what you can use to the best extent of usability out in the boreal forest, whether that's the Russian boreal forest, the Alaskan Canadian, or even parts of northern U.S., continental U.S. We're talking specifically the boreal forest. Now, there are many different climates and many different environments, and so each of them kind of requires a different tool set and a different idea or approach, but by and large, what you are going to see for the boreal forest is going to be uh, these types of things, or what I think works best in the boreal forest will be these kinds of knives. So I have a handful of knives, and I picked these three knives here to go over uh, for a few reasons. One, these are kind of my standard when I think about good bushcrafting knives and knives that have designs that have attracted me. These are the three knives that I think are most attractive. Uh, for my use in bushcrafting, but also these are th the three knives that in the last two years I have been fielding and servicing for bushcraft specifically the most. And so these are what I will usually put on my body or around my neck to carry and field and use in the wilderness when I go out. So that's why I specifically chose these three here is because they just see the most action and they see the most field time. So let's jump into first probably the largest of the options and that is going to be the Mora Bushcraft Black. Now admittedly this is the newest of these three knives to my collection but this is one that while on the larger side of things actually sees a lot of use as a general camp knife for me and I really like this knife having it kind of almost in a belt like position where I can just grab it for field and camp tasks and food prep especially. Now this knife is far from perfect in regards to being the best camp knife, you know, for doing things like filleting or skinning or dressing of game animals, but what I do like is for a general purpose camp knife, the Mora Bushcraft Black does a pretty good job. So overall, starting to break down the specifications for what I'm looking at or what I'm going for when it comes to a bushcrafting knife. Now, if you're going to go for more of a camp style knife, like I said, I think the Bushcraft Black checks off a lot of the list. And for a camp driven bushcrafting knife, I would go for something in the overall length kind of range in the nine and a half to nine inches in overall length, which is about where this uh, Bushcraft Black falls. It has, I believe, if I remember correctly, a little bit over a four inch blade. I think it's around 1.4, but it has around a four point or four inch blade and that allows it to do a little bit more batoning or industrial tasks while still keeping a lot of the smaller blade abilities. So with this knife in particular, I have, you know, dressed out different game animals and small game animals. Uh, and this knife, once again, is not the best, but it does a just fine job. Whether you want to breast out something like a grouse, this will do it just fine. But you can also take this knife, break down kindling into small sticks and make uh, feather sticks out of those and start fires with this blade. So this is a pretty good 
overall. So that around nine to nine and a half inch overall length with about a four to four and a half inch blade, and of course, four inch handle uh, is going to be what you're looking at for a good or ideal camp knife for bushcrafting. Uh, other knives that would fit this role very well would be things like the Topps Fieldcraft, which I did not bring but is similar in size and kind of specifications. Now one thing kind of across the board uh, that we'll get into in a little bit more depth is the thickness of the blade. Now whether you're looking at a camp driven bushcrafting knife or something more like a bushcraft driven bushcrafting knife, uh, thickness of the blade should be right around 5 30 seconds to 1 8 of an inch. And I think a lot of people like the eighth of an inch and this is eighth of an inch, but uh, I think one eighth of an inch is a little on the thin side for me. I personally prefer, especially for camp driven bushcrafting knives to have a 5 30 seconds inch blade thickness. So it's a little bit more beefy, but really not by much. And it's one of those things that will not impede the kind of agility of the blade, but gives it a nice stout and robust kind of stock where, you know, eighth of an inch under high torsion is going to bend and flex, whereas 532 seconds is not as likely to do that. So anyways, getting back to it, what I look for in a solid camp driven bushcrafting knife is going to be something that's just under 10 inches, has a four, four and a half inch blade, and has a four inch handle. And I like the four inch handle idea because for camp driven, you're going to be spending a lot more time holding that knife and doing things such as carving or feather sticking. So you want plenty of what I like to call sprawling space on the handle where your hand doesn't feel like it has to be all cramped up. You know, your hand can actually kind of take some real estate out, you know, actually have a little bit of space to uh, be comfortable on the handle. So once again, the Bushcraft Black is one of my most used camp driven bushcrafting blades because it fits that bill so well. And honestly, the very minimalist package, this is how I pack it out. You know, I just throw it in a pocket and this is how I carry it out. It's so easy and so user friendly. And that's why it ends up on me a lot. So going over to more of what I consider a field driven or more traditional bushcrafting, bushcraft knife is going to be things more like the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter and the LT Wright Legome. And the Legome, of course, was partly made or heavily influenced by Morris Kohansky, which was the pioneer for bushcraft. He wrote the bushcraft book. Um, so he kind of set the rule of a blade length that is just past your hand or the width of your palm. And you can see that the legome is just that. Hopefully you guys can kind of see there. It's a little bit hard to see the tip, but uh, yeah, so this blade definitely just meets that uh, kind of specification or expectation that um, Moore's had for the kind of perfect blade length. That being said, the Legome is, once again, eighth of an inch, so it is a little bit on the thinner side, but still works perfectly fine. And this is one of my favorite, absolute favorite, go-to bushcrafting blades for being field-driven. Now, the reason why I end up going for a slightly smaller blade, so I should clarify that generally when we are thinking about a field driven bushcrafting blade is going to be under four inches. So both of these knives actually have 3.8 inch blades. And uh, that's the ideal kind of sweet spot for a field driven bushcrafting knife. And the reason why it goes a little bit smaller than a cam driven is that by and large when you're doing bushcrafting, you're doing a lot more material harvesting. And when you're doing things like going out harvesting uh, chaga or you're going out and you're harvesting large pieces of wood to harness and build up a shelter or keep a fire going like you're not going to process a cord of wood with a knife so when you talk about more traditional bushcrafting it's a lot more intensive on using 
uh, larger tools to get larger pieces of wood. So you actually don't want your knives to be as big because the larger the knife, the more cumbersome it is to carry and the more it's going to get in your way. So that's why you don't see things such as a CRK Pacific or, you know, large knives like an El Chetty by Topps. Uh, they are good blades and in certain bushcrafting disciplines and practices they can work. But for the boreal forest, we're going to be harvesting the large trees and doing a lot more that requires things like hatchets, axes, buck saws, and even folding saws. So the blade, the knife, really becomes a mute point uh, at that level and at that rate. So having a smaller knife that is more uh, for just making quick notches, you know, skinning, processing game animals, and doing quick feather sticking, maybe the light batoning, is going to be a more realistic practice of the field-driven, that's what I like to say, <laughs> the field-driven uh, bushcrafting knife. So that's why we see a smaller blade on these, and that's why I prefer when I'm looking for a knife that's going to be more field-driven. I'm going for something under 4 inches in blade length, but still retaining around a 4-inch handle, because with bushcrafting, whether it is camp-driven or field-driven, um, there is, once again, the same implies crafting. You're going to be crafting things, so a lot of times with a... Uh, field-driven uh, bushcrafting knife, you may end up carving things like a netting needle so you can carve, or sorry, um, weave nets for fishing, uh, or you may be doing things like making traps uh, for procurement of meat and animals and hide, and so with either of those, there's going to be a bit of time behind the blade, so having a handle that is comfortable for your hand to spread out, it doesn't feel cramped, it won't get fatigued very fast, is still a very uh, primary focus of bushcrafting knives as a whole. So retaining that four inch handle and the similar blade thickness is going to be there, it's going to be prevalent, but you just want a smaller blade because like I said, these blades are not getting used as frequently or as with mu or as much repetition as a camp-driven bushcrafting blade. So that's the legume. Uh, looking at the Bushcrafter, once again, it's the same or roughly the same blade length. They are obviously different designs. The Legome is more of a Puko styled uh, knife with more of an oval kind of handle, but the Bushcrafter is more of an American design, kind of what you would think of for being an American knife. This really doesn't draw on any of the British kind of camp lore or bush lore designs. It doesn't dry or it's not really pulling its heritage from any of the Finnish or Swedish or Scandinavian designs, such as the Pukos. This is really more of an American-styled uh, wilderness or woods blade. So that kind of design aesthetic aside, still a 3.8 inch blade. I believe this one is just, you know, a few thousandths larger or longer, but negligible in large. The only thing that, aside from the blade shape and overall design, that I like more about the Bushcrafter is that this is a true 532nd. So what that ends up meaning is that it's just a little bit more stout behind the spine. There's less likelihood of any bend or flex in the blade, though it's still not a huge deal, especially with most of the high quality steels that these upper end knives are made out of. But at the same time, having the 532nd is, I think, a really great compromise because it's slightly thicker than 8 one eighth inch, but yet it still isn't very thick. It's certainly no quarter inch thick. You know, this isn't a heavy, sharpened piece of steel uh, that's going to maul through wood. This is definitely still a very serviceable um, thickness. That being said, once again, it does have a smaller blade, so it's going to be more portable, more lightweight, and more manageable or serviceable in traditional bushcrafting senses of doing things such as game processing or doing things like processing of different natural resources, starting fires, light feather sticking, light batoning, and once again, primarily leaving most of the work due to or due for hatchets, axes, saws, buck saws, those kinds of larger tools. So that's uh, basically what I'm looking for when I sit down and whether I'm trying to buy a bushcrafting knife 
whether I'm helping design bushcrafting knives, these are the core elements that I'm looking for from my experience and from kind of joint experiences because we sit down, we read books from Morris Kohansky, and he alone <laughs> has enough uh, experience to put basically any of us to shame. Um, so when he says, you know, these are the types of thicknesses, lengths, uh, you know, overall kind of size and shape dimensions that you want to look for, it's very smart to aim for what he set and not really going after saying, you know, oh, this is a bushcraft knife. You should just buy it because bushcraft is in the name. And certainly there are good knives. One of my most favorite knives, a top four, is of course the Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore, and that is a larger knife. But admittedly, even even for as much as I love the Battle Lore, it still doesn't actually see as much field time as things such as my Bushcrafter or my Legome. And that's really just goes back to, you know, being more of a size thing now. I do think that the uh, Battle Lore is a good... I do think the Battle Lore is a good camp-driven bushcrafting knife, but for traditional or field bushcrafting, uh, definitely these smaller knives take the cake and they are more manageable. And honestly, when you sit down and you think, you know, I'm going to have to hike in so many miles, I'm going to have to do a lot of physical activities with larger tools, do I really want the larger, more cumbersome knife on me? And the answer ends up usually being a no. So, so that's ultimately kind of going back to it, you know, like what drives me and why. I end up choosing these smaller knives and uh, the smaller thicknesses, you know, just knives that are not really built up very much. And once again, you just don't really need it. And in true sense of bushcrafting, the, the larger tools are going to see the primary heavy use, heavy work. So getting back to the knives. So for your <coughs> kind of in conclusion, recapping what we went over. Um, you know, for a camp-driven knife, you really want to look at a blade that is an overall length, or a knife that's an overall length of about nine and a half to nine inches in overall length, and uh, a blade that's around four and a half to uh, four and a half to four inches, and a handle that's about four inches. Once again, you want a comfortable handle, something that you can hold for at least 30 minutes, you know, in active use, not just hold it passively, but, you know, in active use, kind of changing your grip, maneuvering it around, and it's not creating hot spots, it's very comfortable, and you feel like you can hold it for at least 30 minutes, maybe even upwards of an hour, because once again, some projects are a little bit more intensive, and they do take time. If you're carving out spoon blanks, it's going to take some time to do that with a knife, and so, uh, you know, you want to make sure you have a comfortable handle. A blade thickness of about an eighth of an inch to 530 seconds. 530 seconds is my preference, but eighth of an inch also does work pretty well. And there's honestly a lot more knives out in the world that are an eighth of an inch than 530 seconds. 530 seconds is actually a pretty rare thickness or stock of steel. But things like the Bark River knives... So things that kind of meet that, or knives that meet that kind of specification are things like the Mora Bushcraft Black, things like the Topps Fieldcraft, knives like the Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore are going to be camp-driven bushcrafting knives. Now, traditional or field bushcrafting knives are going to be an overall length of under 9 inches, so when you have a blade length that's under 4, but yet you retain the 4 inch handle length, you get something that's around 8.8 .8 inches. Um, you know, you get something that's pretty close to 9, but not quite 9. So, these that's kind of the overall length you're looking for, and once again, a blade length of about 3.8 inches maybe to three and a half inches you kind of just that sweet spot is really 3.8 because it's not quite four but yet it's not quite 3.5 once you start to back down especially below 3.5 you get to a blade that's just a little too small to do anything meaningful so 
uh, yeah, you want to stick with something that's about 3.8 to 3.9, and then of course a handle length that's once again 4 inches for the comfort, and the same type of idea when you're selecting something, it has to be comfortable, you can hold for hours, good traction, and you know, no hot spots obviously apparent. Um, and once again, the thickness of an eighth of an inch or five thirty seconds being preferable. So that is the overall kind of idea and philosophy for finding a knife. And, you know, some people may ask, you know, what steel preferences? For me, I prefer super steels just because they usually have a higher corrosion resistance. They usually have better edge retention. And those are very favorable things, especially when you're working out in the field, you know, and you are in dirty uh, kind of environments that it's not always the easiest to clean off your blades. It's nice to have natural corrosion resistance, but at the same time, uh, things like O1 tool steel, A2 tool steel, D2, and also uh, 1095 are more than serviceable. They work just fine. Um, I've used all of those steels uh, before and they work for me in bushcrafting. You just have to understand the limitations, the corrosion resistance, and the edge retention uh, of non-super steels, and super steels for that matter. So either way you slice it, I definitely would prefer or would recommend staying away from stainless steels because stainless steels oftentimes have a lower edge retention and you may get some of that corrosion resistance, but corrosion resistance isn't the end all to beat all because there are a lot of ways to prevent uh, your knife from getting rusty. So anyways, that is the basics to them. Uh, so last thing is handle materials. Definitely I prefer neutral handle materials, so things like micarta, rubber, or other such kind of materials that don't get too hot and don't get too cold because in the climate that we live uh, up here in, in, you know, Alaska, Canada, Russia, uh, it gets hot and it gets cold. I mean, Fairbanks, Alaska can see 90 above and negative 60. So having tools that, you know, function well in a wide range or band of temperature is important. So that's basically it. There's not too much to be picky about with these knives, you know. Uh, Overall, you want to kind of stay within your size limits, but aside from that, materials that go to make it are not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, you can make do with a lot of different things. So, anyways, guys, this is all for now. God bless, and I'm out.